Hello and welcome to a new video about networks. We're still talking about wireless networks, wireless LANs. And uh, today I want to talk about frequencies and, and data rates and so on, because there are a lot of, lot of things which are, most of them is advertising. It has a technical background, but I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to show you. So actually the standard, the standard, uh, for for wireless networks is IEEE. A two dot eleven, and then we have their different variants. We have, for instance, B. We have G. We have N. We have A. Yeah, and all of them have theoretical data rates. Yeah? All have theoretical data rates. And they are also they are also divided to modulation. Modulation variants. All of them have theoretical data rates okay what is given what is given is the theoretical data rate on layer 2 okay given At layer two, what is important? For most of the cases, yeah, is the data rate. At layer five, I don't care about layer two. Yeah? I don't care layer two, uh, three, four. Yeah, layer five is usually what I see. This is where. This is where I'm interested in. Yeah? And there are there is a difference yeah? because each protocol adds headers, some pre and post fixes or whatever, additional information which is simply necessary to route to do to, to, to stuff. Yeah? And so from the layer two data rate, less is at layer five available because all sublayers add their own prefixes, prefixes, postfixes, and so on, then all additional information. So the modulation, I said the modulation. So we have the signal strength. And depending on the signal strength, the, 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 the uh, standard is given a certain modulation. From this follows the modulation. Depending on the modulation, we have different data rates. Because sometimes I can send with one symbol some bits, and sometimes I can went, send with one send symbol one bit. Huh? So uh, the modulation in use has direct influence to the data rate, to the transfer rate, data rate. It's from the signal strength, modulation use, transfer rate. Hmm. However, also, also, this has to be taken into account, eh? because here we can see that if there are small packets, less data rate, level five. If I'm using a huge package, right, I have one time the protocol overheads from the sublayers. If I'm using tiny packets, 
I have a lot of the protocol overhead of the sublayers. So the smaller the packets, the less the data rate at level 5 is. What is small packets? Yeah, small in example is typical voice over IP application, yeah, telephone, internet telephone. Voice over IP, typical small packet size. Big packets. In example, HTTP transfer. Uh, <laughs> big downloading files and so on. This is big data. Right? So this has all influence on, on the theoretical data rates. And there is one thing more. Yeah? All devices. Share the bandwidth. It's one air. Yeah, there is one communication medium. So we have to share this communication medium. All devices share this fair the bandwidth of one channel. It's even worse, I will show you. Yeah? So all devices using the same channel are sharing the bandwidth. Yeah? They have to wait for each other. And all those stuff, yeah? even if we have optimum, even if we have everything is alright, everything is perfect, yeah? we have not as much bandwidth as the theoretical bandwidth. Yeah? So, the net transfer rate in optimal case is approximately 50% of theoretical. You have this to take into account if you think you can transfer data. Yeah. Depending on the data, depending on everything. Yeah. Uh, signal strength. Yeah. Transfer rate. What is the typical reach? Yeah. Reach. Typical reach. It's about 30 to 100 meter. And free field. Okay. If we have a directional antenna, We need side contact and, and position the directional antenna exactly to each other, then we have even kilometers reach. Yeah. So this is then pretty good. Yeah. In building, inside building, this signal is damped. What is typical damping? You know, the studs, the beams of drywalls. Uh, the moisture, if there is if in, inside the walls, uh, if this is not a drywall, if it's a, a massive wall, then it's moisture there. Yeah, We have maybe some coatings, aluminium coatings inside there because there is isolation, insulation. Uh, we have maybe on the on the window shields or the on the windows we maybe have a tiny tiny uh, thin uh, layer of, of aluminium or some other metal that to prevent the sunlight from clearing in and so on. This is all damping the signal. So we have significantly less range inside buildings. Yeah. We have on the other hand, some surfaces might even reflect and we, can, we get further. 
Huh? So you cannot even tell, but usually you have a significant amount, a significant reduction of range inside buildings. There's a lot of a lot of iron inside a wall, uh, concrete wall, and this all stuff has influence. Yeah? The more conductive material, the more damping there is. Right. So inside materials and so on. We have two two frequency bands in use. Yeah? So we are using two frequency bands. I have to use see what colors I have not used up to now. Blue. Good. We have two frequency bands. Windows. are in use. We have one at 2.4 gigahertz. And we have one at 5 gigahertz. Two to four gigahertz, they are divided into fourteen channels. In most countries, only the first 13 are allowed to be used. Yeah, in most countries. Only the first 13. In some countries, it was just limited to two or three and so on. It's getting better, but most of the countries, only the first 13 of those channels are in use. Each channel, yeah? each channel is channel distance is five megahertz, and channel bandwidth twenty megahertz. But, so. Looking at this, yeah, so we have here channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Yeah? And we have in between here, we have always 5 megahertz. This is the channel distance. Always. Zack, 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 zack. And let's say we're using this channel. Then we have a bandwidth of 20. This channel is in use. And this is the bandwidth of the channel. 20 megahertz. 4 times 5. So if I want to use, if I don't want to have an overlapping, yeah, because those those uh, elements, those 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 cells of reception are overlapping, physically overlapping. Yeah? Then I need to be apart. At least four channels. You have to think about this. Yeah? You cannot operate one device at channel 3 and the other device at channel 4. Because then you would exactly run, run into this problem that all devices share the bandwidth. Okay, there's not that much overlapping, but there is overlapping. If you want to have optimal transfer rate, you have to put them four channels apart. This is at 2.4 GHz. At 5 GHz, it's, it's narrow. Yeah? It's 5 GHz, this is not an issue. This has, has other issues. I will briefly talk about this. Yeah? So four channels difference. That's that's important to know. Yeah? Uh, and channels nine and ten. We have microwave ovens.
is at 2.455 gigahertz. Pretty close. Yeah. And channel 9 and 10 are exactly in this area. So there is leakage. If there is leakage frequency from the microwave oven and there is leakage frequency, yeah, then this microwave will disturb your reception. So maybe you should avoid channel 9 and 10 there. And then, you know, you avoid 9 and 10. Uh, so uh, get use four channels apart. You're pretty limited. If this is not working, then you have to, to uh, live with lower bandwidth, with lower transfer rates. But it's working. Five, five uh, gigahertz usually is only allowed inside. Yeah? In the US, there is an exception for some channels of this five gigahertz band. And, uh, in in the EU, we have uh, from in this area, this is channel thirty six to sixty four, maximum two hundred milliwatts, and only inside, not outside. Yeah. And there's another, another area, uh, where you are allowed to even use one watt. Yeah. It's from, uh, 5,450 to 5,725. You're allowed to use one watt. And, uh, but you have to turn on, uh, the automatic power control. If you want to use one watt, you have to turn on, uh, automatic power control and dynamic frequency selection. And these are two techniques which are built there in those access points and so on. Uh, because this bandwidth has also a primer usage. Yeah? And this is, for instance, rain rather. Yeah? Primary. An example. Rain rather. This is also the 5 gigahertz band. You see, all the bands are already occupied and they have to find ways. And this is why you can adjust at your router in which country you're living. Because then the router knows what is allowed, what is not allowed, on which channels may it might use and so on. Huh? Because otherwise, you can use other settings, but then you have to live with this, with, with, uh, Consequences by law, yeah? it's one side, but it's also not optimal technical solution because you have to live with disturbances. It's not that nice. So you see, uh, there are issues in wireless LANs with the frequency and transfer rates and so on. Yeah. Next time we're talking about security. Another issue because we cannot protect the, the, the medium physically, yeah? so we have to protect it otherwise, other than another, another way. Next time, security in wireless solutions. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.